Hello and welcome to this lesson for higher biology, which today is looking at the first stage of respiration, which is glycolysis. So you are expected to understand the reactions in the glycolysis phase of respiration. And the first thing you'll need to be able to do is explain the importance of respiration, then describe the process of glycolysis itself and be able to state the energy investment and energy payoff stages in glycolysis and what we mean by this. So to begin with, we'll just have a little look at ATP and the need for respiration. Now ATP is essential to biological systems. It's the link between reactions that release energy, which are catabolic, and those which use energy, which are anabolic. ATP is sometimes referred to as the energy currency of the cell as it is spent during cellular work such as much muscular contraction or formation of proteins and it's banked or stored when glucose is broken down during cellular respiration. So when an energy rich substance such as glucose is broken down inside a living cell it releases energy which is used to produce ATP. There are many molecules of ATP present in every living cell. And since ATP can rapidly be broken down to form ADP and phosphate, it is able to make energy available for processes which need energy. So ATP is really important because it provides a link between our energy releasing reactions and our energy consuming reactions. It provides a means by which we can transfer the chemical energy from one type of reaction to another in a living cell. ATP is constantly manufactured in all living cells from ADP and PI and the rate of production of ATP will vary depending on the type of cell that it's in. Now there is a further role that ATP has which is involved in carrying out what we call a phosphorylation reaction within a living cell. So phosphorylation reaction is one in which a phosphate group is added to a specific substrate and it's an enzyme controlled process. Now just a little note that you do not need to know um, the names of these two particular enzymes, just that this is the process referred to as phosphorylation. And we'll come on to a couple of examples of phosphorylation um, as we talk about glycolysis later on. So ATP is used to phosphorylate different molecules simply by removing that third phosphate from it, producing ADP, and the PI goes off to attach itself on to another protein, and that protein becomes phosphorylated. It's a reversible reaction, so we can take that phosphate, add it back onto ADP, forming ATP, and our protein is therefore dephosphorylated. Now it's important to note that these two proteins are actually the same protein, it's just that the action of adding this phosphate on has changed the shape of the protein a little bit. And that's what we mean by phosphorylation, literally just using ATP to add a, a phosphate onto another molecule, usually a protein. Now ATP itself comes from the breakdown of food, usually glucose, and our overall reaction in respiration is that of taking glucose plus oxygen and releasing ATP, carbon dioxide and water. So there's three overall stages in cellular respiration that allow us to release that energy and produce ATP. The first stage is glycolysis, the second is the citric acid cycle and the third is the electron transport chain. So to begin with, we're just going to look at glycolysis. The overall process of glycolysis then takes glucose and breaks it down into two pyruvate molecules or pyruvic acid, but usually referred to as pyruvate. So we're going from a six carbon molecule to two three carbon molecules. This is going to overall release two molecules of ATP. And we're going to use our pyruvate in our next stages. This process happens via a pathway that contains two intermediate steps and the first of these steps is what's referred to as the energy investment phase. That's where we take two molecules of ATP that are used up, producing two ADP and two phosphate molecules. The second half of the pathway, on the other hand, is what's referred to as the energy payoff phase and that's where essentially we take 
4 ADP molecules plus 4 phosphate molecules and we're forming 4 ATP. So our overall balance becomes 2 ATP. We've used up 2, we've formed 4. We also have a further um, reaction happening, which is where we have some particular enzymes referred to as dehydrogenase enzymes. And a dehydrogenase enzyme is removing high hydrogen ions and high energy electrons and passing them on to a coenzyme, which is called NAD. And that is re reduced to form NADH. Our overall production gives us our two pyruvate and our two water molecules as a result. So the entire process of glycolysis is really very simple. We've got glucose mo molecules being pro broken down into pyruvate molecules and the overall production gives us two ATP molecules. In addition to that, we've got dehydrogenase enzymes removing hydrogen ions and electrons and passing them onto this coenzyme which is called NAD. That forms NADH and releases some other hydrogen molecules. Later on, we're going to need this NADH in order to produce our ATP. So you should be able to state that the importance of respiration is to produce ATP, which is also known as the energy currency of the cell and is vital um, for cellular work to take place. And that the process of glycolysis involves glucose being broken down to form pyruvate. And that uh, during that process, we have an energy investment of producing two ATP molecules being used up and four being produced. So we have an overall benefit of gaining two ATP molecules. As ever, feel free to ask any questions you like when we go over this in class.